the splendid and the splutter. Sir Handel felt rushed off his wheels. After feigning an illness led to Peter Sam's accident with the slate trucks, the thin controller was making him do double duty. He knew he had brought it upon himself, but felt his position deeply. As soon as he finished with one train, it was time for another. At the end of the day, he returned to the sheds, too exhausted to complain. <laughs> Rusty and Peter Sam were grateful for this. One night, Sir Handel entered the sheds in a right state. Those ridiculous trucks! They're too difficult to shunt, and nearly made me late for my other trains. I'd rather take the stubborn cattle truck coaches all day. Oh, well, uh, you won't like this, then. Rusty interjected cautiously. Mr. Hugh says we need to be up early tomorrow. A large order of slate is due to be brought down from the mines before your first passenger train. As expected, a groan followed this news. Surely you can bring it down yourself? Afraid not. There's too much for me to pull alone. Besides, after you leave with the passengers, Mr. Hugh and I need to continue our track maintenance, and we can't delay that. Sir Handel knew it was fruitless to argue, and decided to get what little sleep he could. The morning sun peeked out from beyond the hills as Rusty and Sir Handel set off for the slate mines. Sir Handel remained silent as they journeyed up the line. Rusty, trying not to provoke a reaction, wisely refrained from speaking. When they arrived at the mines, Mr. Hugh addressed the engines. You know, the trucks aren't in the best shape, and the slate is very heavy. Therefore, you two shall take them in groups of ten back to the yards. Be careful. We don't need another engine out of commission. Sir Handel blushed and looked at his buffers. Operations went smoothly throughout the morning. Four trains of loaded trucks had been brought back to the yards within a few hours, and the men were pleased. Sir Handel remained silent and did his best to keep the trucks in order. He was looking forward to the job being over. As he brought his third train into the yards, Sir Handel spotted the thin controller waiting for him. Oh dear, he gulped, what have I done now? To his surprise, the thin controller was smiling. Ah, Sir Handel, just in time, he said. I have a meeting with some important men from another railway soon, and I want you to pull our train. Please leave these trucks and go get ready. I want you in tip-top shape and right on time. Sir Handel was ecstatic. A special train! That'll show the thin controller how grand I am, he thought to himself. But his driver was concerned as they shunted the trucks into the sidings. I hope Rusty and Mr. Hugh can manage the rest of the trucks alone, he sighed. Sir Handel, too excited about the special, didn't give a second thought to the matter. Up at the mines, Mr. Hugh informed Rusty of the situation. Looks like we'll have to take it from here, old boy, he sighed. Rusty worked fast, not wanting to delay the track repairs. Eventually, he began to feel worn out, but only had two more trips to make. Please, sir, huffed Rusty. Can we take all these trucks at once? I know I can do it, and we'll be late if we don't hurry. Mr. Hugh was reluctant, but after looking at the time, as well as the determined look on the little diesel's face, he agreed. Sir Handel was sizzling happily at the station. The coaches had given him little trouble, and he arrived with plenty of time to spare. The men were very impressed, and complimented him before making their way into Agnes. As Sir Handel waited for the guard's whistle, he basked in the sun, thinking how splendid he was. At that moment, 
A feeble horn sounded, and Rusty came into view. The little diesel was exhausted as twenty fully loaded slate trucks rattled slowly behind him. He was red in the face, but determined not to give up. Sir Handel gave a chuckle. <laughs> Sorry to leave you with those troublemakers. More pressing matters to attend to. Everything seemed to happen at once. The guard blew his whistle, but it was drowned out by the sound of Rusty's engine. With a mighty splutter, a thick black cloud of exhaust spewed from his radiator just as he passed Sir Handel. Rusty felt better after that and began to pick up speed. But Sir Handel was coated in black dust. His paintwork wasn't gleaming anymore. He coughed as he left the station, the coaches laughing to the point of tears behind him. For the rest of the day, Sir Handel pulled his trains covered in soot. There was no time in between trains to clean him, despite his best efforts to convince his driver otherwise. He remained silent for the rest of the day, with not a smile to be seen. When he returned to the shed, Sir Handel found Mr. Hugh looking over Rusty's engine. The little diesel apologized for what happened, and when the driver finally offered to clean him off, Sir Handel couldn't stay cross. Then they saw the thin controller walking towards them. The two engines gulped and began to stammer out apologies, but the thin controller held up his hand to silence them, smiling. I'm very proud of you both, he beamed. Rusty, you worked very hard in spite of the timetable changes. Sir Handel, you gave the railway men a magnificent ride, as well as a laugh. Everyone, save for a blushing Sir Handel, chuckled. Peter Sam was happy for his friends, but was still puzzled. Sir, what were you meeting with those men for? We're not being sold again, are we? The thin controller chuckled. Bless you, no, he said. Quite the opposite. Those men own a factory railway. I met with them because I'm looking to acquire another engine, should any of you have an accident. After our discussion... I have decided upon an engine. We can look forward to meeting him very soon. With that, the thin controller walked away, leaving the engines teeming with anticipation.